right. Uh, welcome back, uh, Valley Free Radio listeners. And uh, welcome to our NCTV audience. This is Rick Haggerty kicking it for Peace, Culture, and Education, <clears throat> airing each Sunday morning from 8 to 10 a.m., replaying Thursday night at 11 p.m. And I want to say welcome to our guest, Jessica Sokol. How are you this morning? Hey, how are you? I'm a little sleepy. All but, right, uh... yeah, better, better late than never, right? <laughs> Fashionably late. Yeah. And you can can you see yourself on the uh, screen up there? I guess I can. Yeah, it's a little, a little, little tilted, but uh, here, I'll show you right here. That, that's what you're going to look like on Northampton Community Television. Aren't the cameras better than it's the fine. last time? Totally. Do you yeah. remember the, uh, yeah. Yeah, there used to be like a big... Yeah, kind of the, I don't know, fish wall. eye or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, now we got like, and uh, and if you watch, watch this. Check this out. Oh, you guys have totally advanced. See that? I'm like, <laughs> I'm in control here. So we're, I'm so happy to have you on. And uh, yeah, you can listen through the headphones if you want, but uh, uh, there's not much going on there. Just little music in the background. <laughs> you look better without them. No. Uh, so anyway, for better and worse... And uh, what a great reception for your book. Uh, it's all over the place, and you've got it downtown. You've got it online. It's a great book. I, you Thank know, I, you. I, I, I hadn't read it the last <laughs> time, and so I was right. kind of flipping through it. But I read it. It's really something else. It's really fantastic. And you were so kind to send over uh, excerpts from The New Age of Consent. And I'm talking, so put it on me now. <laughs> and... Uh, can I read the little intro you sent Absolutely. me? Absolutely. Okay. Welcome to my in-depth and brutally honest account of men and women and sexual relationships in the new millennium and how they tie in today's ever-changing times, norms, and current events. From a 17-year-old high school senior heading off to a nightmare of a prom, boy, it was, from what I read, that was that was wicked. And yeah. he got king of the prom. I'm like, am, I was am like, I allowed almost, to read part of that yeah, in a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. Um, to a 20-somethings journey through Portland, Oregon, um, and with men who seem larger than life, everyone is out looking for something that just might be love. And that's what, for better and worse, was based on, I don't know what to say. I mean, the story was unbelievable. And now I know what you mean by the roommates from hell. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, no, no, everybody has a bad roommate. The journey curse. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Um, by the way, did you catch the uh, tea right there? Oh, thank you. Right? The Irish back from breakfast. Ireland, yes, right? Okay. Just back from Ireland. Sorry, yes. I don't have hot water for you, but uh, that's why I was late. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little uh, Irish whiskey, I suppose. <laughs> huh? uh, so uh, back to this. Um, now you're 33, and the story reflects back on your real life adventures while unpacking what is going on in America today, and questioning everything I think I know. Well. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of... Well, I think we're all questioning what we know, um, but what we do know is that, uh, you know, the... Um, I mean, I, you know, I, my, my ex-wife's uh, grandmother was... Uh, she once showed me a picture of herself with uh, Spencer Tracy, and I was like, my God, you know, she was like a kind of a budding uh, actor, and I said to her, what happened? She said, well, you know, I was a very uh, devout uh, woman, and she said, you know, I wouldn't play that game with the producers. So she got out of it and, uh, but I mean, who gets their picture taken? You know, like a uh, whatever, headshot or whatever with Spencer Tracy. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if you watch Turner classic movies or whatever, but you know, obviously an incredible icon. The new age of consent attempts to connect the light and the dark and hopefully finds uh, something at the end of the tunnel. Hop on board and enjoy the ride. Okay, so why don't you tell us about um, about your book, and um, yeah, why don't you? Uh, is this yours? That's mine. Yeah, oh, that's do you need to read from that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because because I have this Probably. one right here. Okay, perfect. I, I brought um, my copy. I think. Uh, why well, don't you? Why don't you kick it off? It, it actually isn't starting as a book. It started as an article um, that I just wanted to kind of put my thoughts down on, and it it's turning into something bigger than I could have imagined. Kind of like my first book of for better and worse, um, but it does start of me being 17 and at this prom and and having a really bad experience um and I, I can read from it in a little bit but i think what's going on in america right now is really hard to unpack at this moment um there's so many nuances and so many details that we just do not pay attention to that i think you know women as much as men need to take personal responsibility for what is going on 
And that's that's mostly what my piece is about, is about everybody being human beings. We're in this together. We're supposed to, you know, kind of come together. And it doesn't really seem that way from everything that I'm, I'm reading about and everything that I'm hearing. And uh, I, I guess that's where it all starts to unfold. Okay. So um, when you say we're all supposed to uh, kind of come together and we're all in this together, um, one of the things I read in your article um, was that, um, well, maybe I could, maybe I could just uh, uh, read from it. Uh, yeah. There was, uh, yeah, there was something that I was interested in on page, uh, I guess it was like 25 or, well, anyway, it was when you were talking about, um, you were talking about fast forwarding. Uh, to being back in North, in cozy little Northampton, mm-hmm. and you were beginning to, you know, uh, catch up on everything that was happening. And you say, politically and so, quote, politically and socially, it's been a madhouse, especially when it comes to men and women. But I feel safe and grateful living back in Northampton, Massachusetts. While living in Portland and South Florida, I had relationships with men and a few women, but the men all across, across the board have a common denominator. Despite their varying ages, careers, and backgrounds, None of them are truly bad guys, but there are parallels in the, here we go, insensitive and lazy ways they treat relationships and how they feel entitled, particularly when it comes to women. All right, so do, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I think that's a, a definite uh, thing that keeps on happening. Uh, no matter where I met men um, from, you know, be it 17 to 21 to to 33, I guess, at this point. Um, I do think that there is a common denominator in the point that, you know, privileged people, males in specific terms, uh, do feel that way, that they can just be lazy and treat women in a certain sense. Um, I, I'm, I'm not stepping down from that stance at all. I think it is just something that happens. Yes, yes. I, uh, I can... Uh hear it you know throughout the book um and uh you know sense that uh well uh there's some specifics i think as we go on um so i'll I'll go on really but more okay uh quote first there's been a kind of accepted behavior in bed that women have dealt with for so long where did it come from and has it always been there from uh you haven't let me do this to you yet and you want it to um, I want to see you, you know, maybe do something further, given we're FCC and on radio. We'll, you know, maybe go, go a little bit uh, deeper with that um, offline. But um, I, I end quote, I want to hit you across your face and elsewhere until you cry. Um, that will turn you on. Um, like any uh, of this, like any of this world actually ever turn me on or would it? Did we grow up, grow up learning it? Do women act just naturally accept this? And even if we did, should we still? Is it maybe something that does turn us on to surrender? Certainly being called words that maybe, uh, you know, frame that uh, before your prom isn't one of these things and neither is violating one's privacy after a prom. So could you could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think that um, in in my experiences, I've always kind of, accepted and wanted to feel wanted and so men who have kind of taken control and wanted to really be aggressive and urgent in in a sexual manner um was always something that I felt was sexy and now it's kind of unraveling to the point where it's like is that not the case anymore you know when I talk to 20 year olds maybe that's not sexy to them Um, which is a little weird for me because that's what I grew up learning. That's just what I always thought, you know, a man and a woman were supposed to kind of be urgent with each other and be aggressive and kind of as a woman to, to surrender, to be able to feel that way. Um, so it's, it's getting a little backwards in a, in a sense to me. Huh? So it's, it's, so it's not. Uh, to, to, the, to the 20-somethings that you've spoken to, you're saying, um, and I mean, I'm not sure what sample size you're talking about. Um, have you read any studies on it or anything more no, in depth? No, it's just, it's just it's people I work with. Just and, experience? Yeah. Personal just experience? Overhearing conversations and <clears throat> and uh, knowing people that, you know, have gone to Smith College and they're just so 
pro women in a way that is the opposite of what I think is is kind of pro women. Um, they're so anti feminist in a way that it's like weird that I feel like a feminist because I want to be a strong woman and I want to still feel wanted and they kind of feel the opposite. Okay. All right. Um, well, let's go on. Um, uh, so you talk a little bit about, <clears throat> whoops, you talk a little bit about the, um, uh, obviously, uh, uh, explosion in the news of, uh, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, and worse, and all of the people that have had to really, you know, step down, um, and, um, and really the, you know, the person at the top of our government being, being one of them and not stepping down. Uh, what do you think, what do you think of that, by the way, that our government is run by a, uh, a person who has been, has been do- documented that he's, you know, uh, sexually offended women and abused women, degraded women, and, you know, nobody doesn't seem like anybody's really calling them out to a significant degree. Given your expertise around this area and you've written so much about it, how do you feel about that? Uh, he's definitely not my president. I will never even call him by a name. Um, I just came back from Ireland and Scotland and met so many wonderful people, and we just kept saying uh, things like King Obama because <laughs> we just want Obama back so badly. Um, and and. There is a there is a big disconnect about how uh, white males are treated. Obviously, this whole thing with Aziz Ansari is really keeping me up at night and driving me a little insane about how uh, this one unnamed woman, who I don't even think is a woman, I think she's kind of a robot or a girl or something, um, can write about you know a, a brown skinned man and he gets the wrath handed to him and the man who will not be named in in office is just getting by with with everything um it, it really bothers me so much um which is also what i talk about in the new age of consent just about how women have to start taking personal responsibility because we cannot keep blaming men for everything and especially when it comes to uh as you say, in the government, um, he is a big person to blame, and we need to we need to blame him for it. Uh, yes, yes, we do, and he does need to be called out. Um, if you just tuned in, this is Rick Haggerty, kicking it for peace, culture, and education, airing each Sunday morning from eight to ten a.m., replaying Thursday night at eleven p.m. And I'm here with uh, Jessica Sokol. She's author of For Better and Worse, and we're previewing her essay. Uh, the new age of consent. I get that right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks for doing this. Uh, let's move on. Uh, time is short. How you doing? You got the water right there, yeah, right? And once you, uh, I'll put the. Yeah, okay. So, uh, cameras on me. So um, you say that it's really quote. It's really difficult to draw the line between tolerable and unacceptable behavior. I guess that goes on to the kind of the aggression thing and uh, expecting it and that seeming to be the norm. Or the fast sex, I guess. I guess we should say, or fast moving um, stuff, um, because there are so many nuances and perceptions and social cues that are given off during a date. Is puritanical thinking really an answer moving forward? I don't think so. And in my experiences, I've always, as you said, wanted to feel wanted. All the women I know do. We could be in this together a little bit more as humans. And then you talk about the uh, conversations that you overheard, you know, 20-somethings, et cetera. And then you say, quote, I stop and listen. And the young man she's talking to stands there shivering and puffing on a smoke. He obviously has no response to this. And that is the young woman saying is how she is, quote, uh, sick to death of thinking back on the number of times a man looked at me from across the street or across the bar and started following me after leaving a store. So you want to talk about that? I, I, d- I yeah. do want to talk about that. Um, it, it it really um, bothered me to hear this conversation going on between a couple of twenty somethings about a woman saying, you know, she's she's sick to death of having a man look at her or having a man, you know, walk behind her on the sidewalk. And to me, I'm thinking, you know, the the men have a right to to be on the sidewalk that we're on. The men have a right to be at the bar. Um, Maybe they, you know, saw something that you wanted them to actually see, like the low cut top or, or whatever you were wearing. Um, it just it, it struck me as so strange that this is the way that 
now people in their 20s are thinking that um, it's it's wrong to have somebody be behind you on a sidewalk. It's wrong to have somebody look at you. I, I don't buy into that. I don't think it's wrong at all. They have every right to be there as, as we do. Um, so that's, that's why I, I put this piece in because it really did strike me as shocking, you know, in, in an uncomfortable way where I wanted to be like, well, come on, you know, we can't, we can't keep blaming men for everything. We have to try to be in this a little bit more together. Okay. So I, I, I suppose that would lead to, um, your statement. It's a slippery slope, but shouldn't accountability be a priority for everyone put my scarf around my mouth and nose to keep walking home thinking we can't keep blaming men for everything as much as I would like to from past experiences. I believe that some men truly want to listen and learn and help and it might be surprising who they are. Um, so. And yeah. I, and I, I totally stand by that. Um, I think if we all just told a little bit more of our stories and, you know, we're not just so quick to cut off people as a gender or anything in in general um you know it might be surprising that we we can all just listen to each other a little bit more and uh is that's in the in the dating relationship um a, around the water cooler um a, on the street in northampton any particular place or every place i mean or, definitely yeah. in the dating pool for sure i mean i think that's the first place it needs to start but everywhere Great, great. Listen to one another. Now, you've been out of the dating world, has it been for seven years now? Uh, I think five. F five years yeah. now? Okay. So you're reflecting back on experiences you had um, in Portland, mm -hmm. uh, which you wrote extensively about in For Better and Worse. Yeah. All right. Amazon Books. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. For Better and Worse, <laughs> for Jessica Sokol. There we go. Right. <laughs> I mentioned that before you came on. Um, and uh, uh, at, w w before you went out there because there were relationships here and you talked about uh, high school and prom and, and uh, another relationship when you were, you had your shop at the, at Thorns. Yeah. Uh, and in downtown Northampton. Yeah. Right. So, um, so it's reflecting on the past and is it cathartic to get it out there? And uh, I mean, how does it feel? You did mention, I think at the end of this essay um, that an author who you were hanging out with, having a drink, I guess, said, and he, I think he said something like, uh, you know, uh, do you feel, uh, uh, don't you, oh, here it is, quote, don't you just get, don't you just get nervous putting everything out there? Unquote. I reply, quote, I don't know how to do it any other way. We just have to keep talking, right? Unquote. He looks at me intensely, smiles, nods, and says, quote, unquote, yes. All right, so let's talk about uh, getting it out there. Let's let's talk about that. Um, I mean, I I feel a little bit spoiled because I have not been in the dating world for for five years, but I still do put myself in the situation of thinking, you know, what would I do if I was single? I do put myself in that situation all the time. In a in a you know, thinking, what are people doing these days? And when I see or hear that people are doing all this stuff online, and you know, not really meeting the people that they're about to go out on a date with, you know, that to me is a little foreign um because i was very old school in the way that i like to to meet people to go out with i would go to a bar and hang out and have them buy me a drink and see them face to face and get to know them can, can, can i stop you right there for yeah. a second okay because i told you uh the last time that i dated pretty extensively um online um and so <laughs> when you say well here's the thing you meet somebody cold in a bar, you don't know anything about them. Online, it might be a fake profile, and, and a lot of times, you know, those are the case, but those are pretty, I mean, after you're on there for a while, you're like, okay, that's weird, I won't go there. Um, but it's usually, you know, uh, likes, dislikes, taste in music, uh, taste, uh, political stance, uh, uh, experience with dating, whether you have kids or family or where they're from. I mean, sometimes it's like a full page of stuff, that when you're in a bar, I mean, first of all, I can get all, that in 20 minutes uh, at a bar. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> first of all, alcohol is not part of it. When you're reading something online, you can stop, you can come back to it, you can read it, you can contemplate it, you can think about it, you can send very little information, you can meet in a public place over coffee, um, and then decide after five minutes, which actually my, my sweetheart has said to me uh, after, I think she said 30 seconds into it, she was like, we're done. 
you know, and kind, you know, very gracefully kind of got out of that, uh, you know, within like five minutes. So anyway, um, it, it's I'm hearing a little bit of oversimplification of what the online da- dating is about. But you you've made it real clear that you prefer the bar scene. Well, yeah, I yeah. mean, I can make that simplification very clear in in the five minutes of meeting them face to face like I can look at you and like we have a you know a connection we can talk we can be open with one another I know your political stance I know your what you like or or don't like and I don't have to be worried about meeting you at a coffee shop or anything like I would get that straight off the bat don't you think it's typically as you said fast love fast sex Mm -hmm. the bar scene is kind of known for it Coffee shops aren't quite, and, you know, uh, pre-qualifying somebody up front, uh, it, that's not quite the, they're, I, they seem like, oh, no, and a lot of people do go out just to have a good time and go out with their friends at bars, but it's, a, and again, alcohol impairs judgment, so it's part of that scene. Um, so I'm, I'm still trying to grasp how the bar scene is, is the smartest way to go. I'm not I'm not saying it's the smartest way to go. I'm just saying that's what worked for me. And I'm I'm also just saying in in tying it back into the new age of consent, um, my latest piece of writing, I do think that, you know, when you are going out and looking for something, there is something to be said about having your own personal responsibility uh, as a woman and and as as a man as well. You know, men cannot take advantage of women, but women also have to have uphold their end of the bargain i guess yeah it it, you know it re it um it all reflects to me on something called social intelligence and that is you know rather than just cognitive intelligence but uh noting like where we are uh who we are you know what we're looking for um and i think doing it in the most um you know responsible way and the most um uh you know, uh, well, I mean, it does reflect on intelligence as well. How do, what do you, what do you uh, think abs- of absolutely. social intelligence? I, I totally agree with that. Um, I think the responsibility factor is is what I'm trying to get across here. As, yeah. as much as it might not be a, a popular opinion right now, um, especially with with uh, younger women that I'm I'm getting to talk to, and and they kind of feel, I guess, entitled in a way. And I want to not put them down but also just make them see that like we fought really hard to get where we are like especially people before us and we have to uphold you know our end of of the game kind of in a way um i don't i don't want it to be this case where you know aziz and sorry is the the topic of conversation throughout the world when i'm traveling i i think that's awful um i think it should be about the man who you know who will not be named that is holding our government right now um it should be more about people like that yes yes um so let me ask you have you read i think uma thurman is one that has been you know quiet for a while Mm -hmm. and i mean you know kill bill and all the other great roles she's had i've been waiting and waiting you know to hear what she had to say (laughs) and uh yeah um she said um yeah um we're yeah she said um a lot you know um (laughs) i'm one of the reasons that a quote a young girl would walk into talking about weinstein his room alone the way i did Quentin and Harvey as the executive producer of Kill Bill, a movie that symbolizes female empowerment. And all of these lambs walking into slaughter because they were convinced nobody rises to a position who would do something illegal to you, but they do. So I guess that's the, you know, what they do to you, like what um, what is potentially, uh, you know, dangerous in a lot of ways. And, you know, so this is a victim talking Right. Um, it's a victim, and so she's one victim of you know just hundreds and hundreds. It, with just this one person. Do you want to talk about? Uh, um, did you read about Uma's response? I, I did, and, and, and this yeah. is a, How do you this feel is another it? this yeah. is another thing that I I want to make very clear. Um, yeah. Is that I feel that if women, you know, think that you know this this one person says, oh, I regret you know, going to Aziz's apartment and spreading my legs out on the counter and, and doing this, that to me is so different than somebody being held hostage or, or getting raped or being an actual victim. I think we're discounting the women who are sexually 
assaulted um, by saying everything is is wrong. Um, and th- this is a thing that bothers me quite a bit. So, uh, so this, uh, Aziz, you're talking about um, a dating relationship and you're saying that it's uh, contrived? From the uh, voice of the victim? Yes. Is that, that's I, I, I mean, asserting? I do. I do okay. think that, like, we cannot say, and we, I mean, all women cannot say everything is sexual assault, obviously, because it's not, because that's discrediting who actually is sexually assaulted and, you know, d- didn't have a choice. Um, and that that strikes a, a really wrong chord with me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, sorry, I had the camera while I was kind of <laughs> looking around here, trying to, you know, do the, uh, do the, do you want to say that again so I can get on the camera? No. I, no. So, um, all right, so you, so, you, so you empathize with the victims. Totally. But you feel as though um, it's somewhat, uh, uh, it's difficult in the dating world to read this, the signs. And one of, the, one of the things that struck me in your essay was that the men... Uh, and if I'm not quoting exactly, um, I had many, paraphrase, sexual relationships with men that seem larger than life. Talk about that dynamic, the larger than life. Because certainly, you know, Weinstein, you know, uh, mm-hmm. horrible uh, sexual offender, abuser, um, you know, rapist, really. Right. Um, to many women, he seemed larger than life. So what's the what's the difference? Uh, the difference for me is that I was I was never, you know, pinned against a corner against my will and threatened of my life, I guess, you know, larger than life to me would be that they were very tall, beautiful men. And I myself put myself in these situations to want to be with them. Um, And that's, that's a big difference, obviously. Um, The new age of consent clearly is why I titled it that way. It's, it's, it's us as women wanting to feel wanted and and be with these kind of men that do seem larger than life to me, you know? Um, And, and there is a huge uh, disconnect, I think that's starting to happen. And I fear, I fear a kind of backlash of, of women thinking, you know, that men can't do anything to them or, or even want to get kind of sloppy in a, in a bar or want to hit that on them or just talk to them in general, because it's, it's going to create this kind of, weird fear that women have now and I I just don't think that that is what will make us move forward I do feel like the men that seem larger than life to women um, should be sexy you know sex still should be wicked sexy Um, and I I, I'm a little concerned about where it's headed I guess yeah yeah okay (laughs) all right all right so uh, so you're defending men and um, I'm defending women too. Like I really am. <laughs> you're defending women. You're defending women, um, and you want everybody to uh, talk more. I want everybody to talk more, and I want everybody to take personal responsibility. So instead of just uh, going to a bar and having sex, they should talk. Now. I think I think that would be a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, um, I'm you know. Uh, being Buddhist, you know, dialogue is the key to all ills in a lot of ways. And maybe, like I said, maybe, you know, again, if alcohol or, a, you know, a lot of alcohol was taken out of the equation, it'd be talking with uh, without impaired judgment. Um, you know, I, I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, meeting somebody and getting to know them over a cup of tea or a cup of, a cup of coffee. So that's my, that's what, that's, I, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, yeah, having dated for a few years anyway, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, it just felt more comfortable to have it be, you know, like a soft drink or, or you know, a coffee shop. So I, I, I totally, I totally get that. But I also, you know, the way I start off with my article, like I did, I did not really drink in high school. And uh, my, my first entire spiel is completely, you know, sober about being 17 and about being kind of harmed in this weird way at the beginning of a prom um so i just i do think that yes alcohol definitely impairs judgment but it also is kind of a a social uh lubricant in a way yeah yeah i guess uh, (laughs) lubricant being the operative (laughs) word here all right well listen uh thank you so much for coming back um, and I'm glad you made it. Thank you. I, I apologize so much for being late. I slept through three alarms. I don't even know how that happened.
Are you sure? Yeah, no, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. All right. So Jessica Sokol and uh, the book, uh, well, the essay. Uh, do you want do you want to plug the book? Yeah, so, let's uh, plug the book. All right, um, go, go ahead. For better and worse, look up Jessica Sokol. Or for better and worse, um, you can read all about men and women and sexual relationships and everything uh, kind of weird and cool and these days um and i am definitely writing a new thing the new age of consent which is what we were just talking about um and i i do start it off with uh all the truth in the world adds up to one big lie one of my favorite quotes from bob dylan um so stay tuned for more on that that's right you're a big dylan fan i am right? a big dylan fan all right jessica <laughs> thank you so much we'll look forward to your next uh Writing, and again, uh, Jessica Sokol, uh, for better and worse, uh, look it up on uh, Amazon.com. Thank you so much, Rick. All right, it's a pleasure having you. <laughs>